What's up gang, it's Ryan here from Ruck.Beer. Today we are taking a first look at the GRXC2 Samurai. That's the Go Ruck and Karyology collaboration ruck. Uh, the Samurai is obviously the theme that has uh, been put into this ruck and I'm gonna say that it is a beautiful ruck. Um, just first impressions when I pulled it out of the bag is that it, it lives up to the pictures. Uh, obviously on the website you got to look for what it was going to be like and in person I am super stoked uh, at how great this bag looks. Now I'm not going to go into depth on all of the special features. I'll touch on them but uh, there's a lengthy article over on Karyology that we'll link to below this video and there Taylor goes into detail on all the different aspects uh, of this ruck and why it took uh, nearly two years to complete. Um, and to begin with, it begins with the material that was used. Uh, it's actually a material that was created. The ruck itself is made of denim, uh, as in like your blue jeans, or in this case, black jeans. Uh, Japan is famous for their denim and uh, for this project, uh, Karyology and Goruck uh, had a brand new denim made, uh, a 15.5 ounce denim uh, that included these little stitches or uh, as the Japanese word translates, little stabs. So all throughout the ruck uh, we see this pattern and it's really slick, um, which ironically the front is slick, meaning we don't have the molly, which is great because it doesn't distract from the beauty and simplicity of these stitches. I will say that um, if I didn't know that it was denim, I wouldn't grab this material and go, oh, that's the same material as my blue jeans. Uh, it certainly feels much thicker and stiffer, uh, as well as the fact that um, almost has like a waxy feel ever so slightly and I think that's ultimately from uh, the company that they worked with to help with abrasion resistance and water resistance so there's actually uh, a, 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 a layer of coating uh, that was put on the exterior of the bag uh, some magical chemical that should help it with uh, durability, strength, and uh, water resistance. And I think because of that it gives it the slightest waxy feel. I would assume that over time that's going to break down a little bit and you'll begin to see some real character develop in this ruck, which is certainly exciting. While we're looking on the exterior, there are some things to highlight here. One of the first being this unbelievable patch. So. This is actually a metal plate. The design was done by a Japanese tattoo artist from California. And uh, they worked with a uh, traditional Japanese artisan who is like world famous for his samurai armor work. And for the patch, he used a traditional uh, Japanese technique of applying the color and this epoxy that comes from a special tree that like bonds with the metal. So this is a metal plate uh, with the print on it and uh, this epoxy coating and it really makes it pop. But when you think about you know what makes this limited edition, what makes this special, I would say that the patch certainly on top of the like never made before fabric, the patch is certainly something for me that uh, is super special. Uh, it is metal, it is Velcro backing. Um, it is something that you're gonna be, want to be careful with. It can get scuffed. And so I saw somebody post about maybe putting like a clear uh, protectant film on it. Um, or you know what? Just send it into battle, right? It's a samurai ruck. It's gonna get scuffed and that is, uh, that's part of part of life. So super cool to have have this work done by this specific artisan in Japan. The ruck does have the front slash pocket here uh, and the zipper pulls. All of the zipper pulls are actually instead of uh, traditional paracord, they went with a silk material and they left the ends a little bit frayed as a as a um, 
a nod to the Japanese uh, samurais um, and a lot of the tassels that they would have on their uh, on their gear. So uh, a certainly nice throw to that. While we're still on the exterior, uh, there are some really nice leather accents. So uh, the top handle is uh, full leather. Um, you know, feels like a, a good normal Goruk uh, grip handle. The underside of the uh, leather here is actually the um, denim material here underneath, so that's nice. Uh, when we look on the back of it, the, uh, the straps also have these leather accents. It's my understanding that underneath these leather is actually some webbing. So from a structural integrity, strength and durability, that should be super strong. Uh, and you don't have to worry about the leather giving or anything like that regarding the straps. They did choose to include Molly on the shoulder straps. Personal preference, I'm a little disappointed. Uh, I would have liked the cleaner look of just the denim again, showing off that beautiful stitch work. Uh, I rarely use shoulder molly except for on my actual rucks that I'm out, you know, doing rucking and go ruck events where I use a sternum strap. Other than that, I'm not really sure there's a purpose. And so I feel like it sadly distracts from the beauty of the material. But I also know that there are people that love it so much that they send rucks that are slick in to get the shoulder rope molly. So to each his own. It is a GR1 model, so we do have a laptop compartment here. Uh, Bomb-proof laptop compartment uh, with the false bottom so that your laptop is protected. We have some leather accents here. And finally, we do have leather on the bottom of the ruck, this nice black leather that over time, uh, with picking it up and putting it down enough, it's really going to um, get some nice character on it over the years. The back of the ruck and the shoulder strap interiors are the 500D Kodura. Um, they th the thinking was that the denim was going to be a little bit too rough on your clothes, and so they wanted something a little smoother. Uh, obviously, 510D is not the smoothest out there. For those of you who have things like the, the Rucker, uh, you know that the 210D is way smoother. But I feel like the 210D probably wasn't the choice because of its sheen. I think it would probably be uh, far too shiny for kind of the muted nature of the denim. So 500D I think was a good choice and I've never had any issues with 500D on my clothing. When we come to the interior of the ruck, I will say that as you notice there, rounding the corners, there's a little bit of a stick with the zippers. This was a particular issue with the very first Karyology collaboration, the Gorilla X, where the material just simply had no give to it around the corners, and so it was real tricky to get it unzipped. I've zipped and unzipped this maybe 10 times now, and I will say that in those 10 times, the corners are getting easier. I think the denim is gonna have a little bit more play in it, and you know, by the end of the month, I would assume that I'm just going to be uh, zipping and unzipping with no issues. Uh, for the sake of protecting our patch here for the moment, no need to get a battle scar on day one. I will set him to the side. And we'll take a look on the inside and goodness gracious, it's gorgeous. Uh, we've got this geometric pattern. Uh, we've gone, thankfully, uh, Karyology went with red. There's been a huge orange kick forever and it's fine, but I really like something different. I like the red. It carries over well from the patch design. We do have three rows of molly. Uh, this is the quick access pocket uh, that I forgot to look at that we'll take a look at in just a moment. The quick access pocket. There is no D-ring and there's no pass through for a water bladder, uh, but instead you get the, uh, you get the quick access pocket which uh, for me is way better. Um, you do have a pouch here that you can put stuff. 
just like in a standard GR1. And we do have our standard GR1 pockets, uh, full panel pocket here, and then the mesh panel pocket in the front. Uh, tag, GR1, Carryology, GRXC2, built in the USA. It's all right there, looking super sharp. The bag itself, uh, one of the things that I really like is that it does hold its shape very well. Uh, a lot of times with the traditional Gorux, um, and especially the Heritage, as much as I love them, they have a tendency to flop when they do doesn't have support of anything inside of it. But this denim material just holds its shape so well. This is like the first Gorux bag I think ever that I've been able to just stand up like this. Uh, with no need of assistance. So that is pretty nice. As I mentioned, uh, there is the quick access pocket here on the back. It's something that everybody wants on every GORUCK bag ever. And for whatever reason, right now it's only coming out in special releases. So I don't know if we'll ever see it on the traditional GR1, GR2, uh, bull, uh, who knows. But it's on this ruck and it's wonderful. So it's nice and wide. It kind of goes shoulder strap to shoulder strap. A nice deep pocket, perfect for all those things that you want quick access to. And the geometric pattern is carried through. The ge geometric pattern is also carried through on the uh, laptop compartment. And it does have a frame sheet that feels like the standard GR1 frame sheet, which is just perfect for everyday carry. Upon release, uh, the Ruck went for $695, just shy of $700, making it, I believe, one of the most expensive Go Ruck bags to date. There's certainly one-offs uh, and some scars, custom maids that have gone for more, uh, but this is certainly a premium price for a premium bag. There was speculation that it might go for as much as $800 due to the fact that it's a material that literally had to be invented. Uh, uh, for this project and and looking at the details of like you know a samurai artisan making the patch by hand things like that certainly uh, feel to me like the price point of 695 is right now 695 dollars for a backpack is a boatload of money uh, sure there are more expensive bags out there but this is no chump change so this is not the bag for everybody. Uh, sadly, the price makes it inaccessible for a number of folks. Uh, but for those that, you know, you like bags, you got extra money, this is a pretty sweet one to own. Uh, I think of all the limited releases, this might be my favorite. Um, I did really like the Kaiden GR2 and the Coyote. Uh, that was pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, this is th this is one of my favorite releases. It's just such a beautiful, uh, beautiful bag. Um, at the time of release, uh, it was estimated, as best I can tell, maybe just over 500 of the 21 liter and 500 plus of the 26 liter. Sold out in about 30 minutes, and there should be another release, I think, next week at Huckberry, where I have no idea how many more they would have. So it seems like uh from a limited release standpoint it looks like there might be like a thousand of each in in production that's kind of a guess uh at this point so unless you catch it at huckberry when it gets released here in a few days uh, the only other way to get it is going to be on the secondary market of course we're just a day or two out of the release and so they're just stupid prices on ebay right now so if you missed it and you don't get it at Huckberry, uh, give it six months and I think the prices will calm back down uh, to where you can pick this up for a reasonable, for what it is, price uh, in the seven to $800 range. Um, 
you got any questions about the GRXC2 Samurai, drop them in the comments below this video and we will do our best to get you the answers. And uh, for everybody that snagged one, I hope, uh, I hope you're as happy as I am with mine.